Exactly. Uh, first of all, I would like to say thanks to the organizers for this nice, very nice uh, working group. Uh, it's, it has been uh, a pleasure to, to see a lot of uh, nice talks. And uh, also thank, uh, thank uh, Damião and uh, Edgar for the invitation. Uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, some work I have been developing with Diego Souza and uh, Lucas Machado and uh, Enrique Fernandez Cara and Kevin Lebauch on the controllability of fluid uh, equations. And uh, I'm going to talk about precisely about the small time global exact controllability for trajectories of the boost next system. Okay. Uh, since uh, we have been watching some quite a few control talks, I won't enter much into details about controllability problems, but I, I just want to give uh, some uh, some uh, piece of word on that. So for me, I understand control theory as the, the part of mathematics that uh, is worried about uh, dynamic systems in which you can act. Okay, so you have a dynamic system which evolves in time, with time, and then you can act on the system. So to achieve some goal that you previously uh, defined. Okay, so generally we can uh, write a control system under this quite general form. Okay, here why is is the state? Why not? Is the initial state of the system? Okay, H is an operator, partial, ordinary, whatever, and U is the control. So it's the thing that you can change or manipulate so that the system, or at least you expect to manipulate through this control so the system behaves or acts in a manner that you want. Okay, Diego has given a very nice introduction in a few minutes ago, so I will just uh, confine myself to this to this slide. Okay, so as Diego said, here you have the, the state space, where is the state where you are solving the equation, basically, the system, basically, and you have the state of admissible controls. Okay, so this is the state where you can take controls, where, where you are allowed to, to, to to consider controls, okay? Because sometimes you, you have a system in which uh, you are limited to some controls. For instance, you cannot expect, uh, in, as in Portuguese we say, okay? You cannot uh, use a bazooka to kill an ant. So you, you cannot use a very strong control to manipulate some, sometimes a, a, an easy system. So then in practice, sometimes you, you, are, you need to, to confine yourself to, to admissible controls are those controls that you can construct basically essentially or the constructs controls that you can pay okay in, in a sense that uh, cost as Diego mentioned before okay so here uh, in this talk I'm uh, worried about the controllability of the boost next system so the boost next system is a system which models uh, uh, large uh, fluid phenomena, for instance, uh, sometimes people use it to model tornado or cyclones or whatever, things in which you have fluid in which the temperature uh, have a huge influence on the behavior, okay? So it's a coupled system, okay? It's a coupled system of uh, an average Stokes equation, which is the first equation here, and a heat equation uh, with this transport term, but it's essentially a heat equation in this second uh, line. So I won't wonder much about uh, boundary conditions, but here for me, boundary conditions will be some kind of Neumann, oh, sorry, the Hobbin boundary condition for the temperature. Okay. Okay, so have Robin, traditional Hobbin boundary condition. Maybe this one for the velocity, you may not be so aware of it, but it exists, it's, an, uh, some, it's called the Navier boundary condition. Here, du, is the symmetric Jacobian essentially? Okay, this M here is a matrix which is symmetric and it's good enough, okay, with good assumptions. And here M is a potential, okay, it's a little M is a potential and big M is uh, a symmetric matrix. Okay, so then I have a coupled Navier Stokes equation and uh, heat equation. Here they are coupled, see that they are coupled to this term here, theta En, 
So theta e n, e n is the is a vector, okay, uh, which uh, is basically okay. In dimension here we are working in dimension two or three. I didn't mention, but okay, I just uh, say it now. And then this e n e two will be the vector zero one. So if if we are in R two, we have for the velocity we have two components u one and u two, and the temperature is coupled to the second equation then, okay, u two, okay, because you have theta e two e two is the vector zero one, and in e three it's the equivalent problem, but here e n is the vector zero zero one, okay, so we are coupling the the Navier-Stokes equation with the heat equation through the last component of the Navier-Stokes equation. Okay, we are not making up, making, making up, up, up the system it exists, it models very different phenomena, as I said. So we want now to consider the controllability problem. But if you look at the way this system is written, I didn't say where is the control. You see, uh, you have the velocity u, the, the temperature theta, but I don't say where is the control. And the control will be, it's hidden actually we hide the control in some part of the boundary, okay? So we have this coupled system and we are allowed to act through a part of the boundary, okay? A non-empty part of the boundary, which we call here gamma C, okay? So everywhere, except in the part where the, the control acts, you have zero boundary condition, okay? I won't uh, worry much, but okay, we, we need to be careful about these kind of things. Okay, so as I said, the control is hidden. So actually we have an over determined system because the control is not explicit, but it's acting through a part of the boundary. As you see in our argument, we don't see much the control actually, but we prove it exists, okay? Okay, so uh, here we are interested in a very, uh, standard, let's say, control problem, which is the problem of global exact controllability to trajectories. So what is this, what it means? It means that uh, we want to, say, to see if it's possible to steer any initial data to a finite, final state of an arbitrary trajectory. More precisely, I just, I made, a, I, I draw a picture here. You see what we want is the following. We have a given trajectory, which is this one, and we have an initial data, which is U0. So you, you know that the, the number stock system has a lot of problems uh, with, about turbulence and the existence of solutions, regularity, and so on. So here, this problem is very natural because if you give a trajectory, the problem is given a trajectory, So you give a trajectory and you give another initial data. You don't know how far it is from the initial data of, the, of your given trajectory, but you give an initial data. It can be very, very far. If you do nothing, which is this uh, green region, you, it can happen anything. Anything can happen for this trajectory because you are, if you don't act, it's a, an uncontrolled solution of the navier stokes equation, so it, it can behave whatever it wants. So the idea is, given this trajectory, I want to build a control that for the trajectory starting in U0, I can meet the given trajectory in some time t, okay? So if I do nothing, my trajectory will do whatever it wants, but here I want to make it meet my given trajectory. This is, uh, this is a very nice, uh, this is a very nice uh, idea because it, it, in particular, if you have a, a trajectory, sorry, a solution without control starting from U0, then you can, you can have blow up or whatever you want. But here, what you are asking essentially is, I want this trajectory to be good at some time t, okay? So that's what you want to make. You want to control so your trajectory is good in the sense that it meets uh, a given trajectory, which in principle is uh, regular, okay? So this is what you want to, to do, okay? So th this is the main question we want to, to study. And then this problem 
has been studied. This is a very difficult problem. For instance, for the, for the only Navier-Stokes equation, I mean, without coupling with a heat equation, this, the, the, the general answer somehow for specific boundary conditions, there is some open problems yet, but a very nice answer in the case of the pure Navier-Stokes equation has been given uh, a few years ago, but it was published actually, actually last year by Cohon, Marbach, and Sur, okay? In which they, they show global exact controllability to trajectories of the Navier-Stokes equation alone, okay? Previously, there, it was known that it was possible to control if the data were closed. What I mean by that? I mean, it was before the, this work from 2020 by, by Cohon and uh, Mahbak and Sir. The known result was if these two guys were close enough, okay, if these two guys were close enough, you could make the trajectories to meet. And then Cohen and Mahbak and Sir, they show that, okay, this U0 can be anywhere. It can be very, very far from this, this U0 naught bar, U0 bar, sorry. Okay, so here we want to see if the same thing happens for the, for the, for the Busnesk system, okay, which is more difficult because now you have a coupled system. Also, uh, the, the so-called local exact controllability trajectories for Busnesk was also known before our result, okay? In the spirit of uh, Navier Stokes, you could also show for Busnesk if the, your initial data were, are close enough to the initial data of the, your given trajectory, then you can steer the, your solution to the solution of the trajectory for, for the given trajectory. Here, we want a global result. No matter how far u naught and theta naught are from my initial conditions, I want to make the solutions to meet in fine time of t. Okay, so this is the result we prove. Okay, As I, I won't wonder about the, the, the spaces, it's very technical, but okay, essentially we say is for any given any time t, no matter how small it is, and any appropriate initial condition and any given good trajectory, you can make your solution starting from u0 theta zero to meet your given trajectory in time t. So, I mean, no matter how small is the time, if you have a good trajectory, you can start very, very far from your trajectory and you can make them to meet in a very short time. That's, the, that's very nice because you can be very far, but still you can reach in a very short time, okay? I won't uh, wonder about the spaces, as I said, because they are very technical, but mm, they are uh, not difficult to define, okay? But they're technical, so I will concentrate on the main ideas. So they, this is the, what we want to prove. We want to prove this result and then uh, how we did it. Uh, the idea is that, the, is that we can act in, two, in three ways, in three parts, okay? In the first part, so let me maybe show you one uh, draw that maybe it's easier to explain what we want to do, okay? So this is the three parts that we want to act. So in, the, in part one, which is this one, we start from U0, okay? Remember, recall that we want to meet the trajectory. This is the trajectory, okay? We want the trajectories to meet. So in the first part, we, sh we show that it's starting from U0 in a very, sh there is, there is this, uh, small time, smaller than T, the time that you gave. Recall that T is given. Very small, it can be, but it's given. And in this first part, we just prove that for the, the system, the coupled system, you can be very regular. So here you say that we show that we can achieve a regular initial data. In some time, is more than the time that you want to control. Then in the in act, in act two, which is here, we show that we can start from this regular data now 
and go very close to my trajectory in a, in a, in a ball of radius epsilon here. I don't know, delta. Let me write delta. Okay, so I, in that two, let me show that we starting from regular data, you can go very close. Okay, now in Act 3, in Act 3, we just prove a, a local controllability result, which is here, which means that starting from a data which is arbitrarily close to the, your solution, you can make these two trajectories to meet, okay? So this is the, these are the three acts. The first act, we regularize. Second act, we prove an approximate controllability result, meaning that we can go very close. And in the third act, we show that actually we can reach the trajectory, okay? This is the main, this is the main, this is the, the main three acts of the proof, okay? So, uh, for the first act, yeah, the first step, we first, as I said, our control is hidden here in this part, gamma C, right, as I said. So we will use a strategy which is very common or very known in controllability of fluid equations in which you want to control a fluid through the boundary. So we use an extension argument. So we want to control in gamma C, what will you do? We will work in an extended domain, O, and we will make, we consider actually a control acting in this extended part here, in this dark gray part, okay? So we work on the extended domain with a control restricted to this dark gray part. And then if we prove that it's, the result is true, essentially in this dark, in this extended domain O, in this after we just restrict the, the, the solution in O to the solution you know, to omega, and then your control will be just a restriction of the solution in region O, okay? So this is very naive argument, but it works, okay? So you extend, consider instead of a boundary control, which you, for people who work in control, it's known that it's very difficult, mainly for fluids. So we consider an, an uh, undistributed control here in the gray part, dark gray part, and then after we just restrict the solution and it, everything works. Of course, in this, in this uh, extension argument, we need to be very careful about regularity, about the extension of the data and so on, but it's possible, not, uh, not just technicalities, but we need to be careful and then we do it, okay? And uh, we extend, it's possible to extend. Then, as I said, we extend our equation. Here is the extended equation. See the, that it is exactly the same equation, navier Stokes with, with the heat. But here we have three main differences. Of course, we are in this domain, extended domain O. But here we consider, see that this argument allows us to consider the equation with zero boundary condition, of course, zero in this sense, of course, U dot nu, so U, it's uh, internal with the norm of zero, n of u is zero, is the Navier condition, and the Robin condition for theta is zero. I mean, in the standard domain, you're con you, we don't have controls at the boundary, okay? Because we are working in this whole domain O. But we put controls here, which we call V, W, and sigma. See that here now it, we, it, it uh, generates an extra difficulty, for instance, that here now, we don't have divergence free for navier Stokes equation. We need to consider some sigma here, but the sigma is also supported on Eno. Okay, so we consider a control V, W, and sigma, which are supported here in uh, outside in O minus omega. Okay, and we extend the, the we extend the initial data and the 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 domain, okay? So here, as I said, we need an, a, a smoothing effect. So this is the result we prove. It's, uh, okay, it's not, it's not difficult, it's uh, technical, and uh, we use arguments from uh, fluid mechanics, but essentially what we say is that for the coupled 
Navier Stokes in heat equation, essentially. Okay, here we have uh, to put an extra term, which is which are related to the trajectory, but okay, but essentially is a couple Navier Stokes and the heat equation. And we show that there exists time is small, it means more in the sense that it's smaller than capital T, essentially, on which in which the solution is H3. Okay. It, for people who work on PDE, this seems, oh, okay, why are you guys proving this? Remember that we are working on an, uh, uh, for, with Navier Stokes equation, which is very nonlinear, it's strongly nonlinear. So this kind of result is, is not straightforward. So, okay, so to get regularity in, in this sense, it's not straightforward from uh, standard uh, regularity result for linear systems, okay? We need to work a bit more, but uh, it's possible, okay? So we prove that in this step, as I said, that we can regularize the solution, okay? Then in step two, as I said, we prove an approximate controllability result in which we show that starting from regular initial data, you can go very close to your trajectory, okay? With controls of, remember that we are working on now on the extended domain, okay? So we are with controls which are supported outside our original region omega, okay? Then how do we prove this approximate controllability result? This is, uh, here is the technical part of the proof. Here is the part that maybe it's the more challenging one because we need to go from an arbitrary smooth data to be very close to our trajectory. And for to do this, we will make use of asymptotic uh, arguments, okay? For this, we make a change of scale, okay? Which is, okay, we make a change of scale and see that when we do this, we go to a new system in which we have now a very small viscosity. So we go from the Navier Stokes for the boost next system, which has viscosity one, okay, here, as you see, we have viscosity one. We go to this new system, which is, has the same uh, features. No? It's, exactly, it's exactly the boost next system, but with viscosity epsilon. Okay, so we introduce this small parameter epsilon, so we get a small viscosity here. But with the price of of being work of uh, working we in a large domain, because if epsilon is very small. T over epsilon is very large. See that here, uh, the idea now is the following, because why, why are we do this? Because now for very small epsilon, essentially somehow, of course it is technical, but for very small epsilon, you expect, you expect that the solution of this boost nest system with low viscosity is very close to the solution of the uh, Euler, Euler heat system. Because if you take epsilon equal to zero, you see that you have an Euler equation in the first equation and you have a transport equation, oh, sorry. So you have a Euler transport equation. And we know how to work with Euler transport equation because when you are, you are controlling Euler transport equation, uh, it has been proved by Cohen and Glass how to they know we know how to deal with this kind of system because uh you use some uh, some uh, you use some kind of flushing out argument okay then here to to work on the approximate controllability we go to this system which has low viscosity in large time as i say we want to to make this system close to the Euler transport equation system. So we will make an asymptotic in epsilon, okay? And here, there is another difficulty because of the boundary conditions. Because of the boundary conditions, the asymptotics that you can make are not so precise. You need to, to, to use a uh, correct correction error, okay? Okay, so this I, I will show you in the case of tra zero trajectory. Okay, the, the trajectory is zero. But when you make the expansion, so of this solution in, with respect to epsilon, okay, 
So you write the solution asymptotically, oh, sorry, the expansion with respect to epsilon, you have this, asymptot uh, this asymptotic expansion, you see, where well, u naught, p naught and theta naught is the solution of a Euler transport equation. And then for this part, we will use the argument of Cohen and Glass. But here, you see, because of boundary conditions, you have a boundary layer, in fact, because of the boundary layer near the boundary, you need to, to add this correction term here with rho, which is, we need to be very careful to handle, okay? This is a, a term that we need to handle carefully. But this term, uh, we know how to handle it. We, we managed to handle it using some ideas of Cohen and uh, Mahbak, okay? And so so, okay, so the idea now is, so as I said here, uh, for, the, for this invisible part, we use the idea of Cohen and glass and so on, because it's just an Euler transport, okay? Then we need to worry about the other parts of the asymptotics. Then the idea now will be to use the part on U1, the part on epsilon, which is U1, P1, theta1, to flush out of the, of the domain, the initial that to say, I mean, you want the solution to meet the trajectory in which this case is zero. Then you flush out the solution. You use this part here, you want P1, P2, theta1 to flush out the initial data. Then the, the, you have an error and then you show that this error is, is small enough. Okay, so then this part here is okay the U1, P1, theta1 U is used to flush out the, the initial condition and the error will be small. So in the end, at the end of the day, you have an approximate controllability result, okay? So here is the part of the invisible part, okay? And uh, here is the part, it's very technical as well, but okay. Essentially, it says that C, that for the first order approximation, okay, which is U1, P1, theta1, okay, U1, P1, theta1, you can drive to zero, okay? Remember that you still have the error. So what we are saying is that U0, P0, theta0 does not make any problem, does not bring any problem because it's an, an inviscid uh, equation, which you know how to, uh, how to handle it. The first order term, you know how to drive, you can drive to zero, which is your trajectory, but now you have your reminder. So we just need to show that the reminder is very small because if the reminder is very small, your solution will be very small because this part is okay, this part is okay, the first order and the reminder is, is, is small. So you have an approximate controllability result. Okay, then here is the, is the, is the lemma that we prove, okay, if you, you have regular, remember, that's why we need the first step. We need regular initial data in this part. So we use the, 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 the part one because we need to start with, sorry. Sorry guys, today I'm, I'm receiving 300 calls per day from Claro and team, sorry. They call a lot, I don't know how to block them. Uh, and then we, Proving this part, starting from uh, smooth data that you can go to zero with the first order term, okay? And then here in the, in, for the reminder, as I said, we need to work with the reminder. You need to prove that the reminder is small. And this, this is very technical, very, very technical. I won't even write it here but it's very technical because you need to work mainly. The difficult part actually is this correction term, but we managed to do it using some ideas of Cohen, Mavac and Sur, and we show some estimate for the, 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 the correction term. And this allow us to get this estimate for the solution. And this estimate for the solution gives us this uh, estimate for the Sorry, this estimate for the reminder allows us to get this estimate for the solution. Okay, remember here, see, we want this solution here. Okay, so 
what we are showing is this solution here. Okay, so this finishes this part. Oh, sorry, we still have some parts to, to, to handle, but okay, I, I will skip this part because this part here is the part where you need to work with general trajectory. Okay, but okay, it's, uh, it's not difficult, but I, I will skip it because of time. So I explain you with the trajectory zero, but here you, you know how to do it with a general trajectory, okay? Now we go to step three, and I, I finish soon my, my talk, in which we need now to prove a local controllability result. And this is, this is actually the not so difficult part because you need to use, we use, uh, we, we want a, club, a local controllability result, so we can use uh, Kalerman, for instance, okay? So we consider the system is still in the standard uh, domain with control V and W, and then here we just need to prove an approximate controllability result in we, on which, we is, which is obtained through an inequality for each adjoint system. As Diego showed you, controllability sum A is equivalent to observability. So we want a controllability result for the nonlinear. What we do, we introduce the controllability for the linear, prove a Kalerman inequality, okay? This inequality gives us an observability inequality, and then this observability inequality allows us to prove a controllability to zero for the linear system, okay? Observability implies controllability to zero in the sense for us, for the system, linear system. And then since we prove the controllability for the linear system, we prove a local controllability for the nonlinear system. Okay, so this is the third step in which we now, from the controllability for a linear system, we obtain the local controllability for the nonlinear uh, system, okay? And then this, this argument is just, uh, standard is just fixed point argument, and then I will skip it, okay? And here I just want to finish uh, with some uh, results. And actually, uh, I, want to, I wanted to, to, to stress only that here we consider the, the condition of Navier boundary condition for the velocity. And as naive as it seems, this boundary condition, which is very difficult to write, but it's the one that we can manage. It's very strange, but it's, the, it's how we, we manage to do it. It's because when you have directly boundary condition for, if I go back to, to my system, if you put here directly boundary condition for the velocity instead of this, we don't know how to make the asymptotic suspensions properly. We don't know how, they, how to, to introduce the correct error and obtain good estimates. Actually, this is a, an open problem uh, for Navier-Stokes equation, okay? Uh, another thing is that it could be interesting to try to, instead of robbing boundary condition for the velocity or for, for the, the temperature, consider uh, directly boundary condition as well. And that we don't know how to, how to do. Okay, because as I said, we don't know how to obtain good estimates on the reminders. Okay. And last but not least, we could ask, what can happen? Because we see that here, here we put, here we put two controls which are implicit in here, in this gamma C, and for you, and a control in this gamma C for the theta. And the question, it would be very interesting because for the, control, the local controllability result, we know that you don't need two controls. We just need one. And the question now is, is it possible to work on this system only with one control? And the difficulty here is because of the station argument. Recall that we state our system, and then the solution that we are controlling actually is the restriction of the solution of in the extended domain. 
So we don't we don't know if we can when when you go uh, where is the draw? Because remember, like maybe I can show you in the draw. Uh, okay, it's here. When you extend and then you control in the extended domain and you go back to the original domain, the, so the solution that you, you achieve is the restriction. So you cannot guarantee that the restriction here in the control part has less controls. Okay, that's the difficulty when you try to eliminate controls. And uh, this is a, still an open problem that to, it's very difficult and we would like maybe to consider in, in, the, in the future. Okay, local, you can do it with less controls, but globally, we don't know how to, to, to manage because you need to use this extension argument. Okay, then I, I finish my talk and uh, thank you very much. <laughs>